Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, and I'm Ahmed Jagadar, your DJ for tonight. And I'm joined here tonight with. My name is Abalogu Muaz. I'll be here with Ahmed Jagadar and uh, guest tonight. And today our episode is going to be special as we have a special guest tonight over with us. And uh, he's come from all the way from Sudan studying uh, in Kuliaf Engineering. And today our topic specifically will be about tradition and culture and so and so on and so forth. So go ahead and maybe give us an intro about yourself. Uh, as Ahmed said, uh, I'm from Sudan, which is... Uh, if you, for those who don't know, it's in uh, Africa. Yeah. There's a lot of people tend not to know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they usually ask where Sudan is. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so, uh, it's pretty far away from here. And it usually takes almost a day traveling here. Yeah. That's why I don't usually go back uh, very often, maybe once or twice a year. Okay. Uh, my name is Amr Faisal. Okay. I'm 19 years old. Mm -hmm. 20 next year, uh -huh. hopefully. <laughs> And uh, I'm in Kulia of Engineering, doing Mechatronics Engineering right now, first year, second semester. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, we're going to be focusing on the topics of uh, tradition and yeah. culture. So, can you give us a brief insight about what all the Sudanese culture is all about? Well, uh, I would say, like, culture in Sudan is, it, it's very culture-heavy, I would say, Sudan is. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to our weddings and food. Oh. This is uh Africa. Yeah. East Africa. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> especially the especially the, the clothes. Yeah. Like uh even our clothes is similar to I think Nigeria. Some yeah. the especially the the juba that we wear. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind yeah. of uh, similar yeah, to Some of them uh we have one that is called uh Alallah, oh. which kind of looks like your Nigerian uh thobe. Thobe. Right? Yeah, it looks like it looks similar to it. Oh. And uh, when it comes to food, we have a variety of food. Uh, our most famous one is called asida, which is mm -hmm. basically porridge. Oh. But it's prepared yeah, yeah, in a, yeah, yeah, in a yeah, very... Yeah. And yum, yeah. right? Yeah. And yum. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. Well, and uh, of course, the biggest part of our culture is our weddings. Okay. Everyone knows that we have... The longest weddings, I think, yeah. <laughs> which last, which could last the whole wedding ceremony could last about four days oh, long. Wow! Oh boy! Yeah, it's pretty long. The grand wedding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, if you want a big wedding, then you should come over to Sudan. To Sudan. <laughs> I'm, just yeah, I'm just saying. So, uh, an insight about, of course, we know about Sudanese culture a little bit, and of yep. course, we'd be focusing on more certain topics as the show goes on. And uh, to all our viewers, any Sudanese here would probably enjoy or maybe <laughs> the different views upon what uh, Amr Faisal has to say tonight. So, uh, of course, your country tends to follow a certain culture, but is there any family tradition which only you and your family members follow? Hmm. Any sort. certain tradition that me and my family follow? Um, not really, mm -hmm. actually. It's it's the same as every other Sudanese family. Typical. Okay. <laughs> yep. There's nothing nothing different. Nothing uh, like nothing special about the family stuff. Right? Not really. Oh, your uh, maybe your culture like apart from uh, being a Sudanese, like maybe your yeah. from your state, you know? Yeah. From your state, maybe you have your own uh, different culture, like stuff like that. I'd say, like, uh, the culture around Sudan, across Sudan, especially uh, now Sudan, since it's, it's broken up into two oh. race, Sudan and yeah. South Sudan. Yeah, the main one, uh, all the cultures are kind of similar throughout, except when you come to indigenous tribes, then okay. there's differences, yeah. of course. And, uh, for example, uh, like, my dad is from a village, and when you go there, it's different from the city life. There's usually the houses the look different, yeah. and the food there is probably way better. Cause, <laughs> yeah. Cause, yeah, they know they know yeah, how yeah, to yeah, prepare yeah. their food. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, like I said, there's not really any different Kinda cultures different, yeah. in my family alone. Okay, uh, so I think yeah, I feel uh, Sudan tends to follow a particular <laughs> tradition and culture of all in unity. Yeah, because the yeah. typical Sudanese yeah. family, yeah. as you mentioned <laughs> earlier. So I think, yeah, of course, we'll be delving more into the specifics uh, mm -hmm. very soon. But before that, we'll be going to take a short break. And uh, mm -hmm. stay tuned in to IUM-FM.
Welcome back to our show guys tonight and as uh, joining me tonight is Moaz and I'm Ahmed, your DJ for tonight and we're joined with our very special guest here, uh, Amr Faisal. Yeah. So of course uh, <laughs> the viewers who have been uh, viewing, uh, they have of course gotten an insight on a brief introduction of what Sudanese culture is all about. Now I think let's get into the specifics yep. and uh, let's start off with a very um, major topic I'd say. Uh, the most important the topic. Most important <laughs> topic uh, which we mentioned uh, which you po pointed out was about the food. Yeah. food. So of course like how you mentioned the food. Yes, is just know like the different types of food like um, how you make it, stuff like that like um, different types you know. How you make it I might not be a, an expert <laughs> on that. But That's a brief stuff huh? Yeah, all I do is just, I'm the one that eats but not really how, how it's made. Yeah, I see. So just the famous dishes of Sudan, uh, what kind of food do Sudanese people prefer? Yeah. Is it like Asians trying to eat, like how we have a lot of rice here, but are Sudanese people like the bread people? Is, 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 is talk, give, us, give us an insight about the food culture. All right, so uh, talking about your, your, your last point, which is uh, the food, is it like bread or rice? Like a lot of people were not uh, as other Arab countries which mm -hmm. mostly eat rice as well as Malays mm -hmm. we are just bread people like you said yeah. like you put it yeah, yeah we're bread people uh, we do eat rice of course but it's uh, not as much as bread yeah it's yeah. rare like yeah. uh, maybe like for events or something then we would eat rice but it's not very common there so yeah. like it's usually almost all our food is eaten with bread yeah so it's it's the it's the choice you know it's the first choice and then if there's no bread then maybe you will you will use rice okay. yeah and uh or like any, i said any signature dish where you the most signature dish is the is the porridge which is porridge. called asida oh. we call it asida yeah mm -hmm. It is uh, basically it's it tastes a bit sour on itself, mm -hmm. which is why there's usually gravy for it. Okay. There's there's two that are well known, which is called one is called tegalia, mm -hmm. and the other one is called drob. Mm -hmm. Drob. And rob oh. is kind of a bit, uh, I would say, kind of like sweet sour cream something like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one, I'm not really sure how to explain, but. Uh, you cannot eat asida without these two. Oh, okay. These are the most signature dishes in Sudan. Like you will see it everywhere. Everywhere. And uh, the second most famous one I would say is called kisra, mm -hmm. which is basically flat bread. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have it, but uh, in Malaysia there's something quite similar to it. Oh. It's called tose. tose. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's it's a, it's similar to that. Mm -hmm. But our one, I would say, is even way thinner than oh, that, yeah. Okay. And uh, it it tastes pretty sour as oh, well. I don't know what it is with Sudan <laughs> sour, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and that's, that's yeah. Nice. So um, as you mentioned, like earlier, like there are different tribes in Sudan. Yeah, yeah. So uh, which which tribe do you come from, and do you all have a specific? Does each tribe have a specific dish of its own? Uh, not not really. It's just uh, in Sudan. Like usually, we know each other by that. Mm -hmm. So there's there's uh, Jalia, there's Denka, there's these different tribes, right? Okay. Uh, it's nothing really. Uh, I would say nothing really that signifies anything. Mm -hmm. But it's just a way of referring to others. Like others, you will like say, like sometimes they will ask. Like some Sudanese people might ask. Maybe maybe especially the elders, mm -hmm. they might ask like which one for me. Which tribe yeah. are you from? And oh. uh, yeah, I'm from the Jaliya one. Jaliya. Which uh, Jaliya stands for I think courage. Oh, so, yeah. so yeah, we're we're the courageous ones. Yeah, there are some some uh, weird traditions that uh, okay. the Jali have, especially in in I think in their weddings, mm -hmm. uh, the the groom uh, to show to signify his power and courage. He will be lashed, flogged. Like, oh, yeah. I, see. Uh, I think we have that. Like, we really? have that in Nigeria. Like, um, really? uh, we call them a Fulanese. Fulanese. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. They will, like for two days. They will slash them for two days. Like. Wow. Yeah. Two days. <laughs> like outside in the uh, in the society, middle of the society. Oh uh, like, yeah. Like, it's seriously, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm about to get married, but <laughs> this is happening. Yeah. So how about the food in the weddings? Because uh, you mentioned it's gonna be grand and goes on for four days. Yeah. Actually, f 
food in weddings, especially nowadays, I'm not sure about how it was back then, but nowadays it's not really any traditional food that I've seen in any weddings that I've been to. Oh. There's no really any traditional That's food. It's just usually... Uh, like because if you were to do that there will be uh, way more money expenditure so yeah. people usually especially because in sudanese weddings there's a lot of people that come to oh. witness oh. Uh, yeah. some of them are open to all and but most of them will be at least maybe hundreds and hundreds of people will be there okay. so they usually will be uh, just a small dish consisting of many different things you know different types mm-hmm. of food. Yeah. yeah it's just very light so like as because there's dancing and <laughs> you know you don't want to get too full. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, as like I as I come from India, of course yeah. we have a lot of sweets and desserts yeah. and so on and so forth, or into snacks. So does Sudan also follow a similar culture of food where you have a lot of other small things which you can just consume? <laughs> well, uh, actually there is in in one of the events that we have in Sudan, which mm-hmm. is. I'm not sure. I don't think it's just Sudan. It's mm-hmm. uh, basically called Mulid, which is the, okay, the celebration of yeah, birth yeah, of the yeah, Prophet, Mawlid, right? Yeah, so. And uh, there, there's usually these uh, pink uh, can doll candies or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So there's there, it's candy and it's pink in okay. the shape of a doll. Oh, oh yeah. See. And then there's one more which is uh, with sesame seeds. Mm-hmm. It's sweet and yeah, I, I love that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these these are the the usual ones. So are are these easily available? These small confectioneries in Malaysia. In Malaysia. Mm-hmm. All these students. I have streets. not seen. <laughs> I have not seen in Malaysia. Oh, at like all. no international uh duty or collect no international restaurants here, yeah? like uh, the yeah, country. Yeah. But I haven't really seen. There was only one Sudanese restaurant that I know of in Malaysia, oh. which is all the way back in Johor where I stayed now, okay. and uh, they don't. They don't really sell these kind of do, treats, Close, right? yeah. Oh. But they sell the rest of the, the the famous dishes, which is you know it's good to have in Malaysia. Cause <laughs> yeah, sometimes yeah. you just miss it, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, I feel like it's yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, that was of course a really good uh, insight on the food culture of uh, Sudan, and of course we will be questioning you more more and learning yeah. you know more about oh, yeah. Sudan, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. uh, traditions and so on and so forth so uh with that uh we'd like to take a short break uh stay tuned into iom fm your campus radio come back to away from home and uh here i'm ahmed jagada your dj for tonight going with uh Mwaz. and our special yeah. guest here tonight uh um, faisal yeah. so uh of course we've spoken about our a brief intro to your culture and then of course the food culture which sudanese yeah. people follow and i think uh let's move on to another point which you mentioned and yeah. uh that will be the weddings of sudan uh-huh. you tend to mention it's pretty great yep. goes on for four days longest weddings and so yeah. on and so forth so uh of course shoot off with uh what uh sudanese weddings just are. give us a little details about your wedding how you prepare how you like yep. stuff like that well <laughs> Like I said, yeah, it's a pretty grandiose uh, like uh, event in in Sudan. Especially the weddings are very uh, important oh, to yeah. us Sudanese. And uh, it first obviously starts the normal way. You'll go to approach the family and get to know the. Uh, although uh, I would, it was uh, mainly arranged marriage, but as mm-hmm. the time progresses, okay. it's becoming normal to just maybe oh. like you know from university yeah, yeah. you'll get to know them and then it goes on. And uh, then moving on to the main part of the ceremony, which is uh, it starts off with something called the Geduma, which mm-hmm. is Geduma. as in preceding the wedding oh. event. You know? Okay, okay. Yeah, so in that basically uh, there will be like a, a, a separate party, I would say, like for women only. Oh, and a spinster's party. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like maybe you could think of it as a bachelor party, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's only for the women. Mm-hmm. Uh, although the only guy can, that can attend is the, the groom. Okay. So he can attend as well. And basically, what they do is uh, either the the bride will sing, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe sometimes even dance actually for the the rest of the women with her. Okay. While there's a uh, a couple of women that will be playing the the drums yeah, as well. Like it's some traditional uh, <laughs> drums, you know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then goes on to the jirtig. Okay. Right. So this. Sorry, uh, it's called jirtig. Jirtig. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
so and this uh, this is probably one of the, uh, yeah this is the most traditional part of our wedding oh. which uh, basically the 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 bride will be covered with she she will wear uh, the normal traditional thobe that yeah. we have it's the thobe is kind of uh, like the sari you know? okay yeah okay. so it looks like that but mm -hmm. it's just red and gold oh yeah all over Oh, okay. And uh, there will be put a uh, henna on her, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it will be very beautiful, you know. Like oh, it's not just they plain, just yeah, yeah plain one, yeah. yeah. They they will get uh, what we call the hanana or the the oh, woman yeah. that was the henna, yeah. yeah. And they usually like they they usually come in with catalogs and they have oh, like all oh, shapes yeah, and it's designs, it's pretty yeah. To our Indian culture, yes. where we do the same, pretty much the same yeah. thing. Yeah, I think most uh, most country do that. Like really? Uh, yeah, most country do this. Like even draw, it yeah. doesn't happen yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah, sure, very well, <laughs> very well. Oh, wow, <laughs> that is that isn't something to know. Oh, someone taking me have uh, the, like the same tradition, like um, something is similar though, because uh -huh. uh, we too in our country too like. Um, the female like uh, is gonna put on like something that's gonna cover her face. Then yeah. the uh, groom's father yeah. is gonna open it. Up. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, that's how we do in our culture. Wow. <laughs> so that's how pretty interesting. You mentioned like the, the bride's uh, dress in that particular ceremony yeah. is gonna be red and gold. Yeah. So uh, well, as uh, coming from India, we have a tradition of you know like decorating the with a lot of gold oh, so yeah, is, it, yeah. is it the same thing in same. Sudan uh, yeah only during that event mm -hmm. uh, the, she will be she'll be wearing a lot of gold on her okay. as well as the, the meal he does of course wear the gold but mm -hmm. uh, his his traditional wear during that ceremony will be the normal plain white juba mm -hmm. oh. but uh, it will be with also gold around it okay. and oh. They will usually put uh, what is it uh, a, a band around his head, mm -hmm. a red, and it will have a, cre a crescent on it, oh. a golden crescent on it. Yeah, and then uh, during that day they will uh, perfume the bride mm -hmm. and even uh, sing praises and du'a, oh. as well, like, you know, in a traditional uh, <laughs> singing. They will they will actually sing it for the for the bride, okay. and uh, then. See, that, that's still just going into the wedding. Oh, it's, it's, still, it's, still, it's still, yeah, still it's still the beginning. beginning. It's still oh, that's kind of serious. Deal. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, it's four days long. So this uh -huh. is, this will probably be like the the second day, or even uh, sometimes it will be different. Like the henna will be on a separate day, mm -hmm. maybe not on that. So uh, when the henna, usually the like I said, the female will be like all designed, uh -huh. and uh, for the males it will just be plain. Like normal plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. For the groom will be uh, both his hands and feet. I see. And uh, for the uh, his friends or close relatives, they will only do one hand only. Okay. Oh. Yep. And uh, so over over the course of like, can you just give us a brief um, idea about what happens each day? Like, well, what is the particular event which is whole? Well, like, when is the yeah. initial marriage gonna take place? Yeah, it, it starts with the jirtik. Okay. That's when it actually starts, mm -hmm -hmm. and then it goes on to the final wedding ceremony. Okay. And that's uh, that's that's I'd say it's a pretty typical wedding. Mm -hmm -hmm. Just a big event and uh, some music. But well, I think each day has its own particular aspect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Each day, like so, uh, it has even if it's like uh, just like an hour. So yeah. it has its own particular aspect, yeah. like uh, each day, you know, four days, so each day they're going to be a particular ceremony, like something like yeah. traditional they're going to yeah. do, I think. So so it first starts with the Geduma, then then the Jirtig, and then the, the final wedding. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, in the final wedding, they would usually, like I said, there will be a pretty big hall. It will, uh, they will invite... Everyone. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, in, in and the uh, Geduma and the Jirtig is usually just the close relatives. Okay. So it's only just for oh. the close relatives. Uh, and the that's kind of an introduction. We call that introduction in our... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just literally yeah, introduction. Yeah, it is. Uh, the stores, like, in our own culture, we, in our culture, where we call it Yoruba, oh. Yoruba. so uh, it's like uh, twice, right. yeah, you know, twice. We call it, uh, we do introduction and engagement. Like, mm. then we, like, it depends on the person, though. If the person want to do introduction only, that's, uh, it's not elaborating it then. Oh. But if you want to do introduction and, like, kind of elaborating it, that's doing it twice. Mm. <laughs> uh, I see. Yes. So, of course, um, all these events are playing a major role yeah. in how things go, right? Yeah. And, uh, uh, of course, a lot of 
uh, forms of media are involved in your whole uh, wedding ceremonies. Mm. So, what is the idea of, let's say, music? Does it play a major role? Do you all have traditional dances or music or some sort of thing? Traditional like dances? Yes, uh, of course we do. Although, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. But, but yeah, I guess so. We do have traditional dances, but uh, usually in weddings, well, the weddings that I've been to, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. it's not really that common. It's just normal dancing. And, uh, of course, there will be music. Yeah, sure. Uh, Sudanese is very rich in music, I'd Aww. say. Yeah. Uh, they basically have music going on all, oh. like all, almost throughout the whole day. I There'll see. be even channels in the Sudanese channels. There's oh. usually segments just for music. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's and, kind of nice, huh? Yeah. Well, like, it's, uh, it's pretty have festive. A, uh, yeah, I, was, uh, I just wanted to ask, do you have a kind of a cultural music? Like, um, you know, in our country, we have uh, something we call Akbala. Akbala. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in our kind of culture. Like it's a uh, Yoruba, so we use uh, the drum, papa, oh. like we, we use the handset and just stir and stuff like oh. that, you know? Yeah, we, we do have actually, uh, especially if you go to, uh, not the main city, Khartoum. Yeah. If you go out, like for example, I once uh, witnessed this one event, which was in, in Port Sudan. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were they were singing in this language it's not arabic it's yeah. not uh, typical like because mm-hmm. we all speak arabic in sudan okay. so it's it's not arabic it was uh well a language that i don't know obviously <laughs> <laughs> but it sounded pretty nice oh. like, yeah it was also like all most mostly drums there was Drum no shit, strings right? or anything yeah. involved so, yeah so as you mentioned like in the weddings as they go on so is that sort of traditional music played a lot during recently no recently, recently not, recent. not it's just uh, you will usually m- what's most commonly going to happen is that they will uh, hire a, a singer, a singer, uh, yeah, to come and, and uh, their, their, to, yeah. their wedding, we have yeah. this, like we have some similarities, you know, African African. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have some similarities. Yeah. 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 A lot of, uh, yeah. I think even similar to India, is it? Mm-hmm. A little bit similar to it. Uh, yeah, some of the like how wedding ceremonies that you mentioned, of course, uh, a event only for the girls, which is called mm-hmm. Mehendi. Uh, where all the close relatives from the girl side mainly mm-hmm. uh, get together and then along with her friends and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's a pretty similar event as how Sudanese weddings go. And of course, uh, in some families, if they do propagate, uh, of course, you've seen Bollywood everywhere. Yeah. So uh, you can have a general idea of how music plays a major role yeah. in those weddings. So I think yeah, in those terms, uh, I think it's sort of similar. But I it guess. depends, of course, India is like a huge yeah. country with different diverse different, cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, of course, is it, how about Nigeria and Sudanese <laughs> cultures? Is it, of course, you mentioned, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind it's of a kind pretty of the same, yeah. Pretty the mm. same, but like in some aspects, you know? In some aspects, like the, how you say, the wedding, like uh, having like four types, uh, four days, you know, mm. for us is uh, two days, you know, okay. that if you want to go in two days, if you want to go in one. And some people might, some people do it once, like um, doing the introduction, like the introduction in the morning, then the remaining in the like, mm. the same day. Oh. Yeah, so for two different types, yeah. So yeah, we've got a general idea of how the food and the weddings go f- uh, in Sudan. And uh, of course, we'd like to know more. And we will be talking on uh, certain aspects of Sudanese culture and traditions and so on and so forth. Uh, for now, we'll be taking a short break. And uh, to hear more from us, stay tuned into IUM FM, your campus uh, radio. radio. Well, another episode of uh, Away From Home. And... Uh, who's joining us tonight is uh my name Balogumwas, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course our special guest here tonight uh Amr Faisal and uh we've been uh, indulging deeply into the Sudanese culture and we've spoken on topics like food and wedding and so on and so forth. So I think uh we'd like to move on to of course the festivities uh which happen mm-hmm. are there uh, certain cars festivals which take place in the country <laughs> or any tribe uh tends to have its own portrayal mm-hmm. of yeah, uh, festival period festival you know period. Mm-hmm. Uh, so apart from uh, uh during eat like you guys you must have uh, a kind of a festive period in your country like maybe your tribes or culture stuff like that you know well mm-hmm. Huh. Uh, I would say, like, 
in is in Khartoum because that's where I live. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the capital city, there's not really much of that traditional festivities. It's oh, just okay. the normal ones, which is the Mulid, Ramadan, Eid, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the, the, the common ones. Okay. And of course, there's the Independence Day, oh, yeah. something like that. But uh, <coughs> yeah, we we in Sudan we like to. I guess m- be festive. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, uh, the time when we get festive, especially during the Independence Day, there's usually like uh, what is it? These uh, uh, we have this place called the Sahel Khadra. Okay. Which is stands for Green Yard or Garden or. Oh. So it's it's a pretty big uh, park. Right, okay. and on that day you'll see thousands and thousands of people. Get people. Su- like it gets oh. very crowded, and they usually oh. play music all, all night until oh. twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock. Yeah, mm-hmm. until until the new year, uh, this, oh. they play until twelve o'clock, and then uh, sometimes they would play uh, what is it? Uh, fireworks. Oh, yeah, okay. for okay. celebration. I see. And yeah, that's. <laughs> Uh, if you go there, you'll you'll listen to you'll get to know a lot of uh, from our <laughs> music, especially. I see. And uh, yeah, uh, other than that, we just have uh, Eid, mm-hmm. right? Which is uh, in our Eid, it's pretty it's pretty similar to Malay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just uh, in Malay, whenever you go to a house, there's usually food, and yes. so you will get stuffed up. But in in Sudan, it's just uh, very light serving, maybe some. Some sweets, some chocolates, some even traditional sweets sometimes, mm-hmm. and it's just very brief. You know, okay. you will go around, visit, visit your neighbors, visit oh, around the whole place. Yeah. So and, okay, yeah, that's uh, of course uh, we have the common cultures, but then yeah. you do mention the different uh, uh, differences, small variations we yeah. have, and uh, so of course how we all both come from. The South African continent <laughs> is it is it sort yeah. of similar what? in no, no 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 like um like during uh, in our own uh, country during Eid uh, mm. that um, though we do like uh, each people like uh, if during uh, Eid al Fitri or Eid al Adha yeah. uh, no uh, Eid al Kabir now yeah. we kill cow so if you don't have we give you and oh yeah yeah, yeah no, pretty, pretty like pretty that. similar yeah yeah pretty similar I see yeah. So, yeah, how, how about the different festivals in Nigeria? Festivals. Oh, we have so many. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a. Uh, I don't know how to like categorize it, but each culture has their own. Uh, yeah. Uh, festival period too. Mm-hmm. Like you know, uh, the one I know is my own culture. <laughs> my own culture. You know, uh, like I said last week, and we have um, <clears throat> during the August stage. They have uh, the one they do um, Oji de Oba. Okay. In my own state, too, we have uh, Eyo. We used to call it Eyo. They have some, like, it's like masquerade, though. They cover from their head to toe with oh. white. So they take a plank. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, plank. So they wear art, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So they have to. <laughs> they, like, uh, we, we have a venue for it. We have a Lagos Island. That's the art of Lagos. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's my state, like out of Lagos. So that's where it's been performed in the stadium. So, you know, they kind of uh, do a parade. Mm-hmm. Each uh, family during the during the uh, festival, during the festival. So they kind of uh, do parades so till mm-hmm. they get to the uh, stuff. You know, uh, each um, state they have and they have their own cultures. Mm-hmm. I see. So uh, I think it's pretty much similar in my country as well, and of course, how India is known to be a very diverse yeah. country because uh, we have a lot of states, and it will feel like a different country each time you enter a new state. Yeah. Because the language is different, the culture is different, the cuisines, the food, everything's different. So uh, of course, I think uh, India is filled with uh, rich culture with each tradition going on. So I originally come from the city of Mumbai. I was born uh, there. So of course, that place is known as quite a hub for all the you know showbiz and yeah. stuff like that. All the celebrities go there. So of course, they also take part in um, the festivals. So when they take part, of course, it's a grand you know, ceremony and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. And um, because it's a country which encompasses people from 
uh, different religions. Different religion, so yeah. each time you see, you know, Hindus, Muslims, and Christians wow. mainly um, having their own festivals, and it's not like secluded to them. Even sometimes Muslims tend to go and just join in the procession. Uh, especially we have this thing in, during Christmas time. Uh, it's called Bandra Fair. The area where I live in is called Bandra, so it's called Bandra Fair, like a you know small, um, so you know it's like a custom every year. It happens mm. in that area for a certain time, so uh, it's more like a small amusement park kind of thing, which mm. is main, and uh, a lot of people go into it, and it's like I said, it's not only them, not Christians, Muslims, everyone. So I think uh, that. A thing which shows you know multicultural like we yeah, all come yeah, from yeah, yeah. different yeah. countries yeah. yeah and uh, then what happened was I of course went on to live in another city uh, we shifted to the city Bangalore towards the south so I think the south uh, southern part in India is quite heavy on tradition yeah, yeah. Oh. so yeah. they have a lot of uh, emphasis on the dress code oh. or the ceremonies and yeah. so on and so forth so uh, I think it really shows like even though we're living somewhat close by, like even though different states or different cities, yeah. we can understand like it's so I diverse. diverse. Yeah. Exactly. Like how you've been mentioning about Sudan and mm -hmm. how it's, you know, varied in so many different yeah. ways. So I think, uh, yeah, we need to understand, you know, these multicultural societies yeah. need to exist. So, of course, you're from Nigeria, yeah. I'm from India, so we're all still talking to each other, yeah. and so and we're sitting in Malaysia yeah. and having <laughs> and having this conversation. Uh, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, that's a pretty, uh, you know, a remarkable thing to yeah. take notice yeah. of. That uh, wow, all these people from different parts of the world are coming in. Yeah. So how about the festivities in Malaysia? Like, are you, especially we in UIA, yeah. tend to have a lot of people from a lot of different countries. Yeah. So do the Sudanese societies in UIA also tend to have a huge impact on the tradition and culture here? Uh, from, uh, from what I know is that there is obviously the traditional week here, or mm -hmm. something, right? And uh, yeah, hopefully the Sudanese society will be will be putting up a, a show, <laughs> we'll, we'll, which will yeah, further we'll, we'll have a wall, yeah we'll watch out for to further yeah. like show you know the, our culture, and I think the culture that I'm like uh, mostly referring to is the where I live, which is Khartoum, Khartoum. <laughs> because yeah. I honestly haven't have not really went around Sudan too much, mm -hmm. so these are just very limited of my knowledge. I see. So yeah. I think uh, we have a lot of uh, traditions and customs that mm -hmm. I don't think in just this uh, sitting we'll be able to finish all and <laughs> yeah, most yeah. probably other people know more than I do true, about true, it true. yeah so like I mentioned like um, in Malaysia yeah. have you ever been part of any fest Sudan fest Sudanese festival in Malaysia um, uh, like especially where you come from Johor or even in UIA yeah. Uh, have you been any part of any festivities? Uh, not yet, no. <laughs> Hopefully in the future, maybe no. one time, yeah. Because as we see, like I think the Sudanese society is quite uh, big and they are in different koliyas and fields yeah. and so on and so forth. So especially, um, I think our famous event, Omatik, yeah. where we will be seeing some portrayal of uh, Sudanese mm -hmm. culture as well. So um, a brief insight about how let's say in the aspect of clothing yeah. is there like as you're from a particular tribe do you all portray any certain values or particular clothing to show distinct or change an appearance oh. to segregate yourself to signify yourself right? hmm. signify your identity uh i don't i don't i don't know of that if whether we like uh there is a different uh what is it clothing mm -hmm. to just show our our different tribes mm -hmm. but i would say just the most common traditional clothing we have is our jalabia which is mm -hmm. just a plain white jalabia yeah. okay. and like i mentioned the one that is uh alallah yeah. which kind of looks similar to the Nigerian juba as well. Yeah. I see. And so are, are those uh, particular clothings worn on certain ceremonies? Yeah. Like how we're in the topic of festivals, yeah. like let's say a royal ceremony. So does you know, the royalty have a certain attire or something uh, of that sort? No, not really. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just the same normal. <laughs> There's nothing so really different. Promoting the ideas of unity yeah. Yeah. and equality, I'd say. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that's a. It's just quite different from us, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's quite it? different from us, cause, uh, you know, I can mention each tribe. 
Mm-hmm. We have a different tribe and three different tribes in our okay. country: uh, Ibo, Yoruba, and Osa. Mm. Yeah. So, like in our own tribe, we signify ourselves like we wear Agbada. It's called Agbada. Mm. Yeah. So different types. Like it's we have different types. We have Agbada. We have Tanshiki. Mm. You know, uh, the yeah. Tanshiki like during the back old days, yeah. it's a uh, kind of uh, it's someone that is wealthy, a wealthy mm. person or a prince. The way that she key, huh? So mm. like the that she key, it has um, different type of categories too, you know. Oh, right. <laughs> so people do wear it, but you know the uh, the uh, materials we yeah. call the uh, the fabrics like um, the valued one is uh, lali and uh, yeah, it's lali, mm-hmm. yeah, the stuff like that, yeah. So like it's kind of pretty expensive though back then, but. Like, but now, like, it's kind of everybody do wear it. Mm. If like they, it was like I wore Agbada during uh, the Eid. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, the one we did, uh, Eid yeah. a little feature. Like, uh, how was it? Yeah, like yeah. recently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, recently. So I wore Agbada. So I just uh, <laughs> thought uh, maybe I should just wear like traditional stuff. Yeah, this yeah. one. <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah. So I think yeah. Uh, in the terms of festivities as we're in you know in the Muslim university and we're mm. all Muslims we do have tend to the same similarities, similarities in the yeah. festivals but small different differences yeah. here yeah. and there uh, from each society and it's, it's yeah. the people uh, it's, it's as well people. That, that make it different yeah. true 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 so I think uh, that'll be it for now and we'll be taking a short break and uh, we'll get back to our audiences and Amr Faisal right here That's to delve sure more possible. into the Sudanese culture. So to know more, uh, stay tuned into IAM FM, uh, your campus radio. will be your hey, for tonight. And um, we are, of course, talking about Sudanese culture. Yes. And we've been going through a lot of topics and so on and so forth. And uh, of course, I'm here joined tonight with uh, Mwaz, yeah. and our special guest here, Amr Faisal from yeah. the College of Engineering. Pretty renowned face, I bet, uh, around <laughs> UIA. So, of course, uh, we've been talking about a lot of aspects in, um, let's say, wedding and food yes. and festivities and so on and so forth. So, of course, as our show, very well, it, it's in the title, which says Away from Home. Uh, how do you feel being away from home especially in regards to family or friends let's say as we're on the topic of you know because i believe that uh, our cultures do emphasize a lot on collectivism and families yeah. and friends so uh, any insight of how it feels to be away from home <laughs> yeah of course i'm sure it's not just for me it's for almost every international here true, true. that we all of course miss our homes and our mm, families yes. especially <laughs> since yeah i do have some of my family members here but you know it's still not not full yeah uh, yeah it's not like how it was Again. before <laughs> yeah a full family <laughs> yeah now now it just became like a, a, tra- a new tradition yeah that, that we have to that my family has to come to malaysia like mm. at least once or twice a year to come visit which is it's good you know like there's mm. still at least we're still interaction, seeing, eh? yeah there's still interaction and of course yeah i do i do go to sudan every once in a while once in a while and yeah like how many times in a year Oh, um, per section or? Well, the last couple of years, very less because of university and oh. stuff, because of studies. So I, I think I went like just uh, once in the beginning of this year in January. I was there. Yeah. And How many brothers do you have? Here? Thank you. I have uh, three siblings other three than me. Three siblings. Yeah, two two elder than me. Oh yeah. Uh, and one is younger sister. Oh, that's yeah. good. <laughs> I, my it's immediate Korea? family? Yeah. Uh, engineering? Oh. Ah, they're, they're, they're in Sudan. Sudan. Except for my sister. Yes, She's uh, in studying school in Johor. Johor. Oh. But as for my brothers, uh, one of them graduated from aviation. Oh. Yeah, he studied uh, in Jordan. And uh, the other one just finished uh, his uh, degree in architecture just a year ago. Oh. I know he's already that's working. Kind of a yeah, good. <laughs> it's pretty tough. Yeah, architecture have have it pretty rough. Mm, true, but true. Uh, yeah, as uh, Sudanese families, I'd say they're usually pretty pretty big families. And oh, like I said, there's the theme. Gaming, right? Yeah, the, the theme of unity in in Sudan as as a, as a whole. 
<laughs> so uh, we are, as family members, are very close with each other. Okay. And uh, my immediate family is just six members, all of us all oh, together. Okay. But what makes it bigger is the the rest of from my dad's side and mm -hmm. my mom, and my mother's side, and as well in Sudan, like I said, mentioning about uh, unity, is that it's not just the family. There's even people from, example, my dad's village and mm -hmm. anyone that knows my dad's family and relatives to my dad's side of the family. They're all considered family, yeah, yeah, so yeah. if I were to say my own family, I wouldn't even be able to count all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even, you know, we all, I'm pretty sure, have heard yeah. the, the, f the phrase, do you know me or do you remember me? <laughs> yeah. Your family yeah, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, like, a pretty, like, we use that, like, much in the family. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can know everybody in your family. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not a and, like, every, every, like, activity or a wedding someone has, yeah. there usually comes everyone from the village. Mm -hmm. They come and... You know, they're in they're just office. family anymore. <laughs> yeah, they they come. You will be like, ah, oh, yeah. that was this. Yeah. Then your dad will be like, ah, oh, these your uncle. These yeah. your sisters. These your aunts. I don't I don't know them, but then they will be like, I know Introducing you since you were like two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we so always have those. yeah. So everyone is like family, mm -hmm. and uh, but talking about my family alone, and a very common theme I would say about most Sudanese families is that. Uh, y you will see them still living with their like in the in their parents' houses. Oh. Like uh, my uncles, for example, they 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 live with their like they they will extend on the house. Like they will build some more onto the onto my grandparents' house. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so it's a, a house within a house. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So it will be basically closer. You know, the family. And of course, we have every weekend. Every weekend we have family gatherings. Oh, wow. oh that's and, good. Yeah, and like I said. Uh, about our food, Asida <laughs> is a must every single every single weekend. Porridge, right? Yeah, every single weekend, <laughs> there there will be that, and yeah, that's that's for my my families. I see. Yeah, I, I remember this one time where when we were uh, doing during our foundation program long ago. Yeah. Uh, I think there was a time you had created a Sudanese drink. Oh yeah. So yeah, uh, is that like a homely thing in your families, or is it a thing which you all make it in your yeah. tradition? It's in uh, it's in every Sudanese household. You'll find it. Okay. And I I do have some with me, not here, oh. unfortunately. Oh. It's, in, it's in Johor, <laughs> at my house there. Yeah, we every 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 year when my when my family come to visit us, yeah. they smuggle some of the Sudanese <laughs> stuff here. Yeah, so so yeah, we we're you know we're not that separate from our culture yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the drink is called. Uh, we have actually very uh, a few traditional drinks. Oh, okay. And uh, I would say the most famous one we call it Helomur. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Helomur. Hello which more. stands for sweet bitter oh yeah uh, the the taste is literally the mm -hmm. name and yeah. if you love it it's like bittersweet love <laughs> yeah, bitter, <laughs> yeah exactly and uh yeah uh like i said you know and you don't miss you know these things when you're there yeah but now that you're far away from it then you just kind of True. longing you know to it yeah. so how do you uh contact with your family like um like uh being in interaction with them like um contact you with yeah. dad's mom yeah. like yeah siblings. it's uh, very often like okay <laughs> like if you say like how many hours difference is there how many hours difference like yeah. between from sudan, uh, oh, from sudan to here to yeah. uh six hours different six hours yep ah oh, but yeah. just one hour like uh, mine from malaysia to nigeria is just seven hours oh wow, wow. I think you yeah, both have a huge <laughs> difference. Yeah. Because for me, uh, as I come from India, India is not really far off from yeah. Malaysia. So yeah. the difference is basically just two and a half hours. Like they're mm. behind me though. But um, so yeah, I think uh, it's not so vast as you all. But uh, luckily yeah. you do have your family yeah. in Some Jokor. of the members here, yeah. Oh. I see. So, so I yeah. think that's what the Sudanese culture promotes, right? The tradition yeah. of yeah. having a big family. family. Because yeah. Uh, of course, as we can see in the West, you know. That's what the Sudanese like. Yeah. Our country too. Like, uh, uh, we. I'm from a polygamous family too. Okay. Yeah. So we mm. have a large, like it's kind of a large family. Oh. So anytime we are we have an activity, like mm -hmm. or something like doing something at home, like in the house, my dad's like every children we have to come home. Like <laughs> during uh age of the future now, mm -hmm. every children both both the one outside like um i have a brother 
in England and I have mm. a sister in uh, Dublin. So mm. they will have to come home yeah. with their family, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Like so that's just like uh, once in a once in a year. So they come mm. home like sit here, uh, we have an interaction, an interaction yeah. with the family, family yeah. interactions, you know, stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, really nice because um, of course in India, as we have many different societies, so it depends on who is doing what. Yeah. So of course. Uh, especially like I think for me it's always been uh, weddings where I have communicated with the family the most because of course I'm away from uh, home as our show <laughs> says it's it itself bus. yeah and uh, I think uh, yeah because uh, in and as we our show tonight is all about tradition and culture so I think it's a traditional thing in all of our countries yeah. where family is given a uh, high priority yep. that's good because True. Uh, Regard if we talk about it in the Islamic aspect, we do are emphasizing since the beginning how to you know respect your parents and um, okay. respect uh, your <laughs> elders all the time. Yep, true. And I think it uh, brings in the idea of brotherhood amongst yeah. each yeah. other. Yeah. And even though it's a generalized hadith which goes on to say you should want for, for your yourself. brother what you I want, want you for yourself, yourself yeah. but I think it even goes for your own siblings and siblings, family members yeah. Yeah. like of course you have some nice uh, shawarma with you but you don't <laughs> really want to share <laughs> but uh, mm. I think uh, you would also want to inculcate that and you know maybe yeah share all these things but I, I used to have a lot of conflicts when I was younger because uh, yeah. I was a guy who used to play a lot of video games oh. so we all used to stand in line to who yeah, sure, sure. Next. Same here too. My so, too, yeah. so I think uh, it's really um, in our culture yeah. which so heavily talks about the emphasis on uh, family, family. Yep. Yeah. and uh, so, yeah. like, how about your peers like hmm. So just give us a, like, just a random uh, briefing about your peers, like like your friends. Uh, you know you're gonna have your friends or uh, friends or friends <laughs> in Sudan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I actually uh, I studied my first five years of of primary school in in Arabic school, Arabic so school. in Sudan. Yeah, the, and then and then uh, then changed to an English school. So I've been learning English, English. from a young oh, age. Yeah. yeah. And uh, well, it's pretty hard to keep contact with all, with my friends from Sudan. Like, since I've I've moved away and like we all graduated and moved oh. away from, because most of them studied uh, in an international school, so most of them are overseas uh, as well. Overseas, yeah. So contact <coughs> isn't really, but uh, yeah, I do keep contact. Like contact. every once in a while, not oh. very often, but you know, you still get to check up on. Oh, yeah, them like once you do in miss them, right? Like um, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, uh, no place like oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, please, like, hey, even like, when you know. I went back, uh, uh, we got like to uh, a gathering. And they invited. Uh, like, uh, I met one of them in a restaurant, uh, which was a very you know nice coincidence. <laughs> I just went to a restaurant and I just saw him and I was like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, it's been like years, <laughs> man. So, yeah, I think, and, yeah. uh, our cultures speak a lot about uh, you know unity yeah. and tradition of family bonding. Yeah. So of course uh, we'll be taking another short break here for a while and stay right. tuned in uh, on IUFM to know more about Sudan and uh, different cultures and our personal stories. Yeah. So see ya. Welcome back to Away From Home. Uh, I'm your DJ for tonight, Ahmed Jagradar, joined here tonight with... Uh, and especially our special guest for tonight, Amr Faisal. Yep. So, uh, of course, we've been saying this over and over again. We've been going different points in culture and so on and so forth. And soon our show will come to an end. So I believe uh, it's necessary to talk on um, the ideas our cultures promote, especially like how we've been talking in different aspects of life where food and mm, yeah. festivities, marriage and so on and so forth. So... Um, why? What is your perspective upon what Sudanese culture upholds or the ideas it tends to promote? Well, uh, the uh, not not the basic actually. The fundamental aspect of our culture is unity. It mm -hmm. all revolves around unity. Mm -hmm. uh, also, one thing that you know to show this unity the Sudanese people have is that you know. Uh, you will if you ever meet like uh, someone on the street although it may sound weird but yeah. somehow you will find later if you get to know them mm -hmm. that somehow you guys are related somehow oh. <laughs> even if you're not related even if you're not related at least one of your relatives is 
So you know, like a, a friend maybe no, of course knows him, or like one of your great great grand grandfathers know his grandfather or something like that. So that's kind of a family bond. <laughs> yeah, family bond. Yeah. So you will like. I would say the whole of Sudan is like related to each other somehow, oh, okay. you know. So uh, there's a very strong fundamental aspect of unity in Sudan, and also like if if you know if you come in Sudan and sometimes you will have some difficulty, maybe your car stopped in the middle of the road or like it's in Ramadan and it's Maghrib mm-hmm. time already, mm-hmm. and you're still in the middle of the road, they will stop you, mm-hmm. like they will literally stop your car. Mm-hmm. in the middle of the road mm-hmm. and will be like pull over come eat first do your iftar oh. first oh. and then you can continue wow and like i said if you see a car on the street that that broke down you'll probably see at least four or five people help pushing the car so that they can start it some even may even try to like you know wire the car to their car oh. so they can start okay. up the battery <laughs> so these kind of things you know that show and strengthen the bonds more, that more, we have i think it's more of a bond of uh, <coughs> along which goes with unity i think it emphasize on brotherhood yeah yeah so yeah it does not really matter if you're my family member exactly yeah it's like uh, if yes. i see someone in trouble i'm gonna help, help yeah. yeah i'm gonna be there yeah, yeah so there's that instinct you know that every sudanese person have in my opinion and yeah of course that reflects upon our hospitality as well true you know how uh, i would say like it's very weird that you know the Sudanese people I see it's not weird it's mm-hmm. we are very well known I would say for our hospitality mm-hmm. like even you as a as a Sudanese person you still feel it you know not just people that come to visit even yeah. you feel it okay. like when I when I'm at our house and guests come over I can just feel it you know like the way my family interacts with those guests maybe there's there are people who just moved in and we don't know them mm-hmm. they will you will still feel like you know them from a long time from ago long you know time ago, yeah. they will come in you will of course entertain them like, and, stuff like that. yeah anything anything you can to you know make them Happy, feel yeah. company and not wanting to leave you know yeah Especially, <laughs> like if you ever go to visit a Sudanese household you will for sure be guaranteed to stay at least uh, one or two hours. Thank you. I'm oh, taking, you I'm taking to come and visit you now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be true to Sudan. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you should come visit me. I'm just see, saying. See the you will never. <coughs> yeah, you will never be able to leave a household before an hour. <laughs> oh, so you will come. You'll first be barraged with like candy and like, you know oh. sweets and stuff. Mm-hmm. Then you will eventually go into tea and mm-hmm. drinks and then <laughs> food. Okay. So if you're ever planning to visit, make sure if you're gonna visit uh, Sydney's house even my house <laughs> make sure you have an empty stomach yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. you'll be getting free refills uh, oh, okay yeah. so I think yeah it, uh, it's a a lot of cultures have different ideals which they promote yeah. and um, uh, as you mentioned the sense of brotherhood of course it's there in my country as well but not so large scale uh, we do tend to live in let's say the like how i mentioned before we live in different states or so different cultures yeah. so of course we are tolerant of each other like especially the city i come from mumbai uh, we have a lot of different people from different tra- societies or communities so we have uh, people who are from the religion of far of the parsis Yeah. Zoroastrians and so on and so forth Muslims and even in Muslims uh, we tend to have in India especially it's seen that we have a lot of different uh, factions in uh, our own Muslim community so I think uh, even though we it's I think those factions mainly exist because of the culture <laughs> each community has because you're all living in the south so even though we are all Muslims our traditional ways are different from the people living Muslims in the north So I think uh, being tolerant is one of the key factors in my country where they speak of uh, cooperating with each other yeah. and living together. And uh, of course we are trying to promote that sense of uh, yeah. brotherhood yeah. as well in uh, our country because uh, of course as we are saying you know in the modern day everyone's becoming more materialistic more yeah. individualistic so we have all these norms which are quite common in the western yeah. societies where individual preference is first is uh, on the uh, on the rise but however it's really good to see that even till today uh, in yeah. sudan you know people still try to help out each other like 
how you mentioned, regardless of your family. Yeah, yeah. So how about in Nigeria? Is it the same thing? <clears throat> That's kind of the same thing, Bo. I would just like to add, um, we, about our, our festive period, like everything, we do it so it won't be forgotten. Okay. Oh. Yeah. We have so many so many uh types of festive period like um like I said in uh Ogun State, um they do uh Ojidioba. In our own state, Las Lagos State, we do Ayo. In uh Oshun State they do uh Oshun Day. Okay. That's the they call it some kind of thing like that. So mm. but, <laughs> but if we check the history looking at the history of this um uh this festival, it's been long, like it's more than decades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's been uh, long. So, so um, if for it not to be forgotten, so we keep on doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's a very really interesting. And, it, and, it's, yeah. and it, every year it gets more like people, like especially the ocean. Like mm. people come from overseas to oh, come. Wow. Yeah. yeah, people come from overseas because like. These three, uh, three oh, yes. uh, again, these three uh, festive period I mentioned, it's, it's like always interesting. <laughs> and like, uh, much people from each state used to go. <coughs> Is that like, uh, different like every year or? Yeah, every year. Every year, different. Every year. Wow. Oh, so I think uh, that's also one of the Nigerian, uh, I think traditions where you have a very heavy yeah. festive, festive heavy, yeah. Like, very, very heavy. Like, <laughs> yeah. like including the governors, mm-hmm. the, uh, there are some that the governors go and there are some that the uh, Islamic cleric goes to, like mm. the imam uh, of the, of the, like the uh, Oji de Oban now, the imam of the state go. He do attend mm. the coronations too. So oh, wow. the uh, the one we do in our state, that's a um, ayo. The governor do go. The governor mm. do attend it. Uh, the one that we did last, that was um, was it last year or last year's? Yeah, governor Ambo Day. He went. Yeah. Have you participated in any? Of oh, no, no, no. I just had to go and uh, watch because I'm not part of the like uh, participant day. So I just have to go maybe one day. and watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of like lousy though, like, uh, very very lousy yeah. and so, rough. Yeah, I think uh, each different our cultures, you know, promote yeah. a certain uh, view. Like how, yeah. especially you mentioned, you know, history. Yeah, yeah. So they don't yeah. want the history to die out. Yeah, they yeah. They want to keep yeah. the traditions yeah. rich and yeah. in living. And then Sudan has a beautiful culture of uh, brotherhood, I believe. And, uh, of course, uh, as uh, we'll be uh, reaching the end of our show, but before that, uh, we'd like to take another short break and we'll get back to you only on uh, IAUM FM. Come back uh, to Away From Home. I'm your DJ, Ahmed Jagridar, joined with... Yeah, uh, what here. And we have here... I'm a Faisal. Of course, I'm a Faisal, our special guest for tonight. <laughs> and uh, our show will be coming to an end, so... We'd like to just sum up that how we've learned so much about yep. uh, our culture from uh, each other and then, of course, from Amr Faisal about Sudan. And um, thank you for coming over and share your experiences with us and, you know, share your knowledge. We all got to learn, you know, Absolutely. we all got to learn. And, and also, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. one very important thing is to highlight, you know, like uh, we're all from different places. We all have our different cultures. But mm-hmm. when we are here together in this atmosphere, we all, you know, kind of engage with each other. True, There's true. no problems. There's, it's just that sense of brotherhood, you know. Exactly. I think that's a very, very important and crucial point, uh, which Amar, I think, has mentioned, especially how you also speak of Nigeria, you know, big yeah. families and, you know, living together, being so close. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, that's a really important uh, aspect, as how you mentioned, you're from different places. Yeah. So, of course, give the stage to you what... what do you think about you know Amr giving us his experience? Yeah, like he's just nice to have such a wonderful guest tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and thanks for honoring us, you know, stuff. Thank you. So, uh, so summary, you know, what you like, what you said from the religion, cultural about the wedding stores, yeah. four days, like <laughs> oh damn, <laughs> yeah, four days, like um, we do all of our weddings. Yeah, so. <laughs> Well, like the cultural stuff too, the clothes, your clothes, yeah. foods, you know, uh, your family. I was gonna wear my traditional. <laughs> I was gonna wear the alala today, but, oh, okay. but like I said, I came all. The, I came back from class straight here, so I didn't really get the chance yeah, to yeah. change. Oh, I was like a surprise, you know. <laughs> I 
So we get we have we get the chance to see that next time. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so today, yeah, uh, I'll bring even some yeah. of the drinks from Johor next time I go back. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, yeah, and especially like uh, as we are part of uh, International Islamic University Malaysia IUM, yep. uh, I think it's really important where we talk about brotherhood. And of course, understanding each uh, other's cultures because that's what Islam preaches to okay. us about, you know, uh, being nice to your neighbors. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, especially you guys come from the African subcontinent. Yeah, sure. So <laughs> <your> neighbors <laughs> already. Yeah. So neighbors already. Uh, but we can see the beauty of Allah. I think in that it's like, even though you are our neighbors, you are yeah. so different True. from uh, each other. And I think, uh, especially me also, like I come from a whole different part of the world yeah. in comparison to y'all. So these values really need to be inculcated. And I think, uh, yeah. like how you mentioned, right, we're living with each other, we're engaging with each other, and especially like how we've uh, you've spoken to us about so many things mm. about your culture, your music, uh, family, weddings, and so on and so forth. And of course, we could also relate somehow, like how yeah. you also mentioned, even your family is yeah. big, and uh, sort of like that. And then um, the ideals which would promote like True. brotherhood and tolerance in uh, my aspect, and so on and so forth. So I think uh, these things are really you know necessary in the contemporary world where we understand each other because i think biggest issue these days is miscommunication yeah, yeah. not really understanding yeah. or maybe saying something as we know okay a sudanese person has this sort of culture now yeah. so we might not say something which might in turn offend them yeah. or make them yeah. feel bad so it's really important for these to engagements yeah. and cultures. Uh, dialogues to exist where we talk and um, you know, spread ideals yeah, and i views. think it's like it's kind of uh, well basically like our mission you know like whenever we're outside our country we need to we're basically all represented of our country true, and yeah. our culture so when we come it's not just that we embody you know right now we're we're all like following the Malaysian culture yeah. we're eating their food and exactly. sometimes yeah. even trying to dress like them you know yes. for yes. Eight, maybe yes. wearing the ba- like, there's, a cult- there's a culture in uh, in a uh, uh, country that yeah. they dress like Kemali yeah. we call them the Ibos really okay. yeah. yeah so they wear the Thai rapa they wear something oh. like lace yeah. they wear lace yeah, they yeah. Thai rapa and they so, yeah, you know. So <laughs> it's a walking stick. Yeah. <laughs> so we come here and exchange our cultures. We yeah. learn about each other's cultures, and that in turn, you know, f- forms this bond that we have. Yeah. And sure. that, you know, that also is possible through Islam. Through Islam, and yeah. especially as how we are in this, uh, we have this platform, great True. platform, where we can call people and then broadcast this kind show. of message. Yeah. And yeah. Kind of give out a message that okay, yeah. Sudanese people think this way, or Indians are having this way or Nigerians tend to speak about so many things so I think uh, that will be it for tonight thank you mm. so much uh, Amar Faisal for coming over it's and uh, sharing mine. your experiences so stay tuned for our upcoming shows every Tuesday Tuesdays. 8 to 10 and uh, of course be uh, sure to watch us on IIUM FM from every Tuesday 8 to 10 about our shows which we will be talking further upon different uh, aspects of cultures and how people are sharing their stories being away from home the experiences so, here too like the experiences here like everything foods families how they meet the families interaction it's like friends here too you know we're gonna be giving you everything Huh? Every yeah. details about everything. So that's all for tonight, folks. And uh, assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.